So it's uh, 11, so let's start. Welcome to Marsh. Okay. Uh, my name is Tomáš Mraz. I work in uh, Red Hat Czech uh, uh, in Brno, in Czech Republic. Um, and uh, I am a principal software engineer in the uh, crypto, crypto team. Uh, basically, we work about all the crypto uh, technologies um, in uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and also Fedora, of course. Um, what we will be discussing today, uh, we start with some motivation. Um, we will talk about crypto policies in general, uh, about uh, custom crypto policies, which is a new addition to this um, uh, tool. And um, uh, we will also talk about, uh, we will show some examples of custom crypto policies. We will talk about future a little and there will be a summary. Uh, for the motivation, um, cryptography and uh, um, cryptanalysis goes hand in hand. And um, basically, uh, the evolution of uh, algorithms and protocols um, is faster and faster. Um, you can never be sure, fully sure that uh, once you deploy something, that in like uh, next year you, uh, it will be secure enough. Uh, so you need to accommodate uh, for the changes. Here is some example of uh, change, uh, changing technology in terms of uh, crypto protocols, uh, TLS. Uh, you can see here how um, the protocols were, when, when the protocols were, were um, standardized and when they were insecure, that's basically where the line uh, stopped to be full, um, where, where they found to be insecure. Of course, they were insecure from start, but nobody know that. <laughs> um, so we currently have still 1.2, which is fairly secure still, and 1.3 is new thing. Um, so you have some pretty nice guides uh, how to um, set up your um, web server, SSH server, um, whatever other application, um, how, how to set up it so it's very, very secure and um, uses uh, the up-to-date uh, um, algorithms and protocols and so on. But these guides, uh, here is one of the examples, um, are very, very long and uh, you, you have to go through them, set up, change configuration files, so on. Um, what if you need to apply uh, these crypto settings um, uh, and changes for the current configuration regularly um, to like hundreds of machines, various various kinds of machines on your on your um, network, and uh, some of them are virtual machines, maybe and, and containers or whatever. Um, and the other thing to complicate things even more. Uh, Various, various machines uh, usually have different uh, needs or levels of needs uh, to communicate with uh, legacy devices. Um, uh, various old hardware, Cisco boxes, I don't know what you, what you can have on your network. Crypto policies come to rescue uh, because they sent, are centrally managed on the system. They uh, provide you multiple pre-designed policy levels, and they also simplify FIPS uh, support if you care about it. If, if you are enterprise, you want to sell to US government or, or related institutions. Um, central, what, mean, what does it mean it's central managed on the system? Uh, there is a single command, uh, update crypto policies dash dash set, and uh, you provide a level you want to set on your system. Um, it, this single command uh, manage, uh, manages um, um, configuration for all these uh, crypto core crypto libraries as, they call, as we call them and also some applications on the, on the um, uh, Fedora or REL system. Um, these are uh, basically all the uh, core libraries that, uh, that are used by the um, 
most, by the base, base uh, system applications. Um, so when the update crypto policies uh, command uh, runs, it uh, uh, transforms a sim uh, simple policy definition file uh, into separate configuration file snippets uh, that are uh, loaded and um, or included by the configuration files of these libraries or applications. Um, let's talk about the levels that we provide, um, which we are like kind of pre-designed. Uh, the most um, lenient level is legacy, uh, which uh, provides you 64-bit security about. Uh, it's, um, um, it also enables RC4 and 3DES, but only for some applications. Uh, for the applications or libraries where we uh, uh, decided that it's not longer relevant at all, uh, it's, it's also disabled for these. Uh, the default level, uh, here are the levels for Fedora actually. Uh, the default level um, still enables TLS 1.0 and TLS 1.1, uh, but disables all the, the, the RC4 and 3 <laughs> Um, the next policy level, uh, which is actually the default for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, um, enables only TLS 1.2, uh, and uh, it also requires uh, Diffie-Hellman parameters to be uh, larger than uh, 2 kilobits, the same for RSA and DSA, but um, uh, there was, at the time when, when we started uh, um, for Federite was like not acceptable because it still broke uh, some websites. But uh, I suppose that uh, in the next release we will drop or change the default for Fedora as well to this level. Uh, the future level is kind of special because it allows you to um, test whether your application or um, system or whatever uh, is um, prepared for the some, some of the future changes. Of course, it cannot enable things that are not implemented in the libraries, but uh, it uh, at least um, uh, drops supports for 128-bit uh, symmetric ciphers, uh, which uh, basically, in this particular part, it, it will prepare you for post-quantum situation. <laughs> and the FIPS uh, policy is uh, special because it removes uh, support for all uh, algorithms that are not uh, approved uh, for FIPS. Um, so, um, and uh, the simplification of the FIPS mode with the crypto policies is provided also by uh, having just a single command that will enable uh, the system FIPS mode uh, for you. Um, because previously, uh, for example, on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 or older releases, you had to follow a few steps that, that you would have to do uh, to enable the system FIPS mode. Now you just run a single client and tribute. Um, so to summarize, um, the system crypto policies uh, provide central management on the system by single command that controls all the core crypto libraries and applications using crypto. Uh, there are multiple predesigned policy levels uh, which provide up-to-date security, also communication with legacy systems or preparation for future. And there is a FIP support uh, 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 provided as well and uh, simplification of, it, of the FIPS mode and implement. Uh, and when you can, where you can get this uh, this tool on um, current uh, Fedora versions um, uh, or all the supported Fedora versions and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. But what if the predefined policy levels don't match your requirements? Now custom crypto policies come to rescue, which is a new improvement of this tool. Um, with this uh, feature, uh, you can uh, define your um, own uh, crypto policies from scratch, uh, or modif you can modify existing predefined policy levels. How to do that? Uh, with, uh, when you define your full policy from scratch, uh, you place um, 
all the uh, place the, the full policy definition file uh, into this one of these two uh, directories, and the file needs to be named uh, policy dot pol uh, with uh, the uppercase in the name uh, in the file name uh, is important because uh, otherwise the tool won't recognize it. Um, the format of the file is uh, kind of simple, although you of course have to know the names of the of the algorithms. Um, but um, as you can see here, uh, you have a hash. It's a simple like uh, key equals value uh, format where most of the value, uh, values are lists of uh, algorithm names, uh, such as here we can have all the various hash. Uh, algorithms. Um, um, this is actually excerpt from uh, user share crypto policies, policies future poll, uh, and provide, uh, as you can see, only uh, SHA 2 and SHA 3 hashes are enabled in the f uh, future policy. Uh, here is a setting for uh, keys, key exchanges. Uh, the gr uh, this is the group uh, key. Um, Again, you can see here that the, these are the um, uh, or, or the safe crypto curves. Um, and uh, here are the normal NIST curves and uh, um, uh, normal Diffie-Hellman uh, parameters um, of these lengths. Um, and in future policy, you can see the minimum TLS version is 1.2. Minimum size of the RSA keys are three kilo, uh, kilobits. Of course, there are other uh, values for symmetric ciphers, uh, signature algorithms, um, and uh, other other parameters. Um, uh, but you might probably not want to design your policy from scratch, full, uh, full, full policy from scratch. Uh, one of the reasons why not to do that is because uh, the various um, uh, crypto backends have, uh, or, or the, uh, the way how the uh, policy is transformed into the um, actual uh, configurations file for, for the libraries, uh, has some limitations. Basically, the limitations are due to the way how the libraries are being configured. We did not, uh, uh, like we added some, some changes, but uh, we did not try to like really, really reinvent uh, all the configurations for, for all the libraries. So, so there are definitely some limitations on what you can set with one library and another. Uh, and for that reason, it might be a good idea to just um, Modify existing uh, existing policy with uh, with the so-called policy modifier module. Um, these modules uh, need to be placed into the modules subdirectory, uh, and they have a different sub suffix p mod. Again, the uppercase in the name of the module is important. Um, so here will be some examples of the modifiers. Um, for example, you can disable SHA-1 hash. Um, you just basically apply these changes to the original policy. Um, that means minus SHA-1 means remove SHA-1 from the list of the ha uh, hash algorithms. Minus RSA, PSS SHA-1, RSA SHA-1, ECDSA SHA-1 remove these signature algorithms from the list of signature algorithms in the base policy. Um, how to apply this uh, modifier? Um, basically, with this command, you append with a, a, a colon, no SHA-1, um, you append it to the base policy, and uh, the policy will be modified accordingly. You can, of course, there is no limitation on uh, if you have a module on which base policy you apply it. Uh, it can be applied on any other policy like future. But in future, uh, for future policy, it has no effect because uh, uh, there is already, the SHA-1 is already disabled there. Um, another example. 
Uh, by default, Camellia is enabled only for uh, like non-TLS uh, applications or protocols. Um, with this uh, plus name of the algorithm, you add, add it to the list of the enabled um, algorithms for TLS. Um, here, just for, there is no problem if you just, uh, if, if there in the base policy, if the Camellia is already enabled, if you add it again, there is no like error or no problem with that. Uh, so it's a good idea to, for, to be for sure that I enable it everywhere. I put it for both TLS and uh, non-TLS ciphers. Um, the other option is to put the plus on the, after the name of the algorithm, which just changes the order um, uh, where the algorithms are put. Because if you put, put the plus be, uh, uh, before the name of the algorithm, it will be inserted on the beginning of the list. If you put it at the end uh, of the algorithm name, uh, it will be put last or appended to the list. Um, you can, for example, disable all TLS protocol versions in legacy policy uh, by these settings. Uh, there is a kind of duplication because uh, some of the backends of the libraries don't allow to selectively disable protocol by protocol. And for these backends, uh, there is the main TLS version or main TLS version. Uh, for the others, uh, you can like selectively use this list uh, to um, disable uh, all, the, all the protocols you don't want. Uh, SSL3, by the way, is already like dropped, removed, disabled. No, no, no need to disable it anywhere <laughs> because it's already dropped from the um, libraries. Um, here is another example to just make the future policy a little bit more lenient because by default, uh, or most of the websites have only two, key, uh, two kilobits uh, RSA keys for certificates. And uh, so this is the most probable reason why if you set future policy, you won't be able to connect to, to many websites. So you could adjust your future, the future policy with this uh, modifier uh, and you would be probably almost possible to use for future policy for like regular web browsing. Um, or you can only allow, for example, um, ECDH and ECDH with uh, pressured keys. Um, this is basically the situation for OpenSSL on uh, TLS 1.3 already because uh, it does not support uh, uh, the uh, uh, the FFDH uh, groups um, and on TLS 1.3, and uh, uh, it, ha it uh, uh, supports only um, uh, forward secrecy uh, enabling uh, key exchanges. So this, uh, by this way, you just remove all the remaining algorithms from the key exchange. Mm. There is a kind of deficiency because uh, it, what would be logical, m more logical would be to have the policy modifier to just set the ECDH and ECDH P PSK uh, to key exchange, but the current version doesn't support this. Um, um, yeah, uh, and uh, the policy modifiers can be applied, uh, like multiple policy modifiers can be applied uh, at once, so basically, you just uh, put all these um, yeah, one after another. Um, the important thing to uh, understand is that the, the generation of the actual configuration files for the libraries uh, is done uh, at the configure time, uh, basically when you run the update crypto policies uh, script. Um, this is important because uh, this uh, allows for um, um, like changing, uh, changing uh, things uh, in new versions of the uh, update crypto policies. 
tool. Uh, for example, uh, OpenSSL backend could allow more fine-grained um, selection of the algorithms because currently it's kind of uh, simple. Uh, and um, or even new backend uh, could be added uh, to support uh, to be supported. For example, we can we are planning to have, uh, for example, Go language uh, supported with a separate uh, uh, configuration. So you would you would not need uh, to um, like regenerate your policy files or whatever. You would just uh, by automatically on the upgrade of the of the package, um, the configuration will be updated and uh, everything will be good, hopefully. <laughs> so to summarize, um, with custom crypto policies, you can define your uh, crypto policy from scratch in a way, in, in a simple policy definition file, or you can modify existing predefined policy levels uh, by adding or removing enabled algorithms or protocols, and uh, the generation of backend configurations is done when update script to policy script is run. Um, the future plans. Uh, one big thing ahead is handling of uh, SHA-1 uh, deprecation. Uh, this is one of the reasons why, need, why we need to change the uh, backend uh, for OpenSSL. Uh, we need to um, be able to basically selectively disable SHA-1. Currently, this is not possible uh, easily. And uh, yeah, that's basically what I've already talked about uh, the fine grain backend configurations uh, for GNU TLS is already improved. Uh, it was uh, in previous versions, it, it was on the more um, similar level to OpenSSL. Um, and uh, yeah, we would like to at some point uh, to, uh, think about data at rest support, but that's a much harder topic. Currently, um, mostly the crypto policies uh, affect only the uh, protocol usage uh, of our algorithms uh, in data in transit. So, quick summary, single com command to rule them all, the algorithms and libraries, um, multiple predefined policy levels, custom crypto policies can be created from scratch or by policy modification, and there is simple policy definition format. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Uh, do these policies also apply to containers running on uh, the uh, operating system? Um, the, they would apply to containers only if you, in, if you inside the container you have the system with, uh, with uh, the, the, the policies. Uh, basically, if you have Fedora inside the container then, or, or RHEL 8, you will have crypto policies. <laughs> it depends on your use case. Uh, is there any support uh, to distinguish between client and server connections? So, say you're trying to uh, insist that clients connect to your service with this particular level, but then your service then has to connect to another service with a different level. Does that make sense? So uh, you're legacy, like so you're you mean to a legacy system, say? If you if you have like multiple systems connect, like uh, well, just between the connecting client and then say you. Say your service has to then collect, connect to another legacy service, which has a uh, you can't control the, the crypto you can use on it. Yeah. Can you define a policy for the incoming connections to be uh, at a high level, say for the clients on the general internet, but then you can have a lower no, level no, for your I don't, I, to your legacy? I don't really. Maybe I don't understand the question really. But basically, the, the policies apply to the whole system. They don't like uh, selectively apply to. Servers, clients, whatever. You, they, they are like kind of general things to be sim simple, like for the um, admin to um, select. So, okay. so, if you have any questions further, I will answer it outside. <laughs>